In the year 3254, humanity had long since ventured into the far reaches of the galaxy. Among the stars, humanity was considered primitive compared to the ancient and powerful alien civilizations that dominated the cosmos. Captain Ethan Hayes, commanding the starship Aurora, patrolled the outskirts of the known universe when an unexpected distress signal flickered onto their sensors. Captain, we're picking up a distress signal, announced Lieutenant Zara Tran, the Aurora's chief communications officer. Her fingers danced over the console, trying to clean up the garbled transmission. It's weak and fragmented, but it appears to be of Zalarian origin. Ethan, a seasoned spacefarer with a reputation for taking risks, leaned over Zara's station. The Zalarians were known for their superior technology and strict isolationist policies. Any encounter with them could either be a potential threat or a significant opportunity. Can you pinpoint its location? Zara nodded, enhancing the signal on the holographic map. It's coming from within the Marathi asteroid belt, Sector 17A. It's an unusual place for a ship to be, especially a Zalarian one. Ethan stroked his chin thoughtfully. Set a course, Lieutenant. Let's see what's out there. The Aurora's engines roared to life as the ship changed direction. The journey through the Marathi asteroid belt was treacherous, with massive rocks hurtling through space at unpredictable intervals. The ship's automated navigation systems worked overtime, weaving through the asteroid field with precision. Captain, we're approaching the source of the signal, reported Zara. I'm picking up a single vessel. Zalarian make, heavily damaged. Ethan's eyes narrowed as the Zalarian cruiser came into view on the main screen. The sleek silver ship was pockmarked with scorch marks and debris, clearly the victim of a recent battle. Any signs of life? Scanning now, Zara replied. After a tense moment, she added, I'm detecting one life form aboard, but their vitals are weak. Prepare a boarding team, Ethan ordered. We need to get whoever's on that ship out of there. A boarding party, equipped with advanced suits and weaponry, quickly assembled. Ethan, donning his own suit, led the team. As they exited the Aurora and approached the crippled Zalarian vessel, the extent of the damage became even more apparent. Hull breaches, exposed wiring, and flickering lights painted a grim picture. They entered the ship through a compromised airlock. Inside, the corridors were eerily silent, with only the faint hum of emergency power systems breaking the stillness. The team moved methodically, scanning each room for signs of life. In here, Captain, called out Sergeant Lena Rodriguez, the team's medic, as she opened the door to a small chamber. Inside, amidst the wreckage, lay the lone survivor. Ethan, we've got a VIP here, Lena said as she began administering first aid. She's in bad shape but stable for now. Ethan's eyes widened as he recognized the royal insignia on Kalara's attire. We need to get her back to the Aurora immediately. This changes everything. Carefully, they transported Kalara back to the Aurora, where she was taken directly to the medbay. Dr. Marcus Harlan, the ship's chief medical officer, worked swiftly to stabilize her condition. Meanwhile, Ethan convened a meeting with his senior staff. This is no ordinary rescue, Ethan began, addressing the officers gathered in the conference room. We've got Princess Kalara of the Zalarian Empire on board. Her ship was ambushed, and she's the only survivor. Ambushed by whom? asked Commander Raj Patel, the ship's tactical officer. And why was she out here in the first place? We don't have those answers yet, Ethan replied. But this could have significant implications. If the Zalarians are at war, or if there's a power struggle within their empire, we need to tread carefully. As they discussed their next steps, a soft chime interrupted the meeting. It was a message from the medbay. Kalara was regaining consciousness. Ethan made his way to the medbay, where Kalara lay on a diagnostic bed, her eyes slowly opening. She looked around, confusion and pain etched on her face, until her gaze settled on Ethan. Where? Where am I? She asked weakly, her voice carrying a melodic yet fragile quality. You're aboard the starship Aurora, Ethan said gently. I'm Captain Ethan Hayes. We found your ship and brought you here after the attack. Kalara's eyes widened with a mix of relief and apprehension. Thank you, Captain. My ship, my crew. We found no other survivors, Ethan said softly, seeing the pain in her eyes. Can you tell us who attacked you? 
Kalara struggled to sit up, wincing from her injuries. We were on a diplomatic mission when we were ambushed by unknown ships. They bore no recognizable insignia, and their technology was advanced beyond anything we've encountered. Ethan exchanged a concerned look with Dr. Harlan. Do you have any idea who might want to harm you or destabilize your empire? Kalara's expression hardened. There are many who covet the Zolarian throne, both within and outside our borders. But this attack, it felt different, like a coordinated effort by a powerful adversary. Ethan nodded. Rest now, princess. We'll get to the bottom of this. You're safe with us. Days passed, and Kalara slowly recovered in the med bay under Dr. Harlan's care. Ethan made it a point to visit her regularly, providing updates and offering reassurance. Despite the cultural and technological differences, a bond of mutual respect began to form. Captain Hayes, Kalara said one evening as Ethan brought her a meal, your technology is different, crude compared to ours, but impressive in its own way. You achieve so much with so little. Ethan chuckled, pulling up a chair beside her bed. We've learned to make do with what we have. Necessity breeds innovation, I suppose. Kalara's gaze softened. I owe you my life, Captain. My people owe you a debt of gratitude. But we must be cautious. The ones who attacked us will not stop until they achieve their goal. Ethan nodded. Do you have any idea who they are? Kalara hesitated, her eyes distant as she recalled the ambush. Their ships were unlike anything I've seen, sleek, almost organic in design. And their weapons, devastating. I fear they may be part of a larger conspiracy, possibly involving factions within my own empire. Ethan's expression turned serious. We need to get you back to your people. If there's a threat to your empire, they need to know. Kalara agreed, but there was a sense of urgency in her voice. Time is of the essence, Captain. The longer we stay here, the greater the danger. It started with strange readings on the sensors, unidentified ships shadowing their movements, always staying just out of reach. Lieutenant Zara Tran, ever vigilant, first noticed the anomalies. Captain, we're being followed, multiple signatures, but they're using some kind of cloaking technology to stay hidden. Ethan's mind raced. Raise shields and prepare for evasive maneuvers. We need to lose them before they get a lock on us. The Aurora's engines roared as the ship darted through space, weaving between asteroids and utilizing nebulae for cover. The mysterious pursuers were relentless, matching their every move. It was a deadly game of cat and mouse, with the stakes higher than ever. Meanwhile, trust between Kalara and the crew deepened, but tension brewed as they uncovered a mole within their ranks, someone who had been feeding information to their pursuers. The betrayal hit hard, leading to a high-stakes confrontation. It was during a routine systems check that Lieutenant Zara discovered the breach. Captain, we've got a serious problem. Someone on board has been transmitting our coordinates and ship logs. That's how they've been tracking us. Ethan's face hardened. Who? Zara hesitated before revealing the identity. Ensign Daryl Moss. He's been accessing restricted systems and transmitting encrypted messages. Ethan immediately convened a security team and confronted Daryl in the mess hall. The young ensign, cornered and visibly shaken, tried to deny the accusations, but the evidence was overwhelming. Why, Daryl? Why betray your own crew? Daryl's eyes darted around, searching for an escape. I didn't have a choice, Captain. They threatened my family. They said they'd kill them if I didn't cooperate. Kalara, standing nearby, stepped forward. Who are they? Who's behind this? Daryl's voice trembled as he revealed the truth. A coalition of alien species. They want to overthrow the Zalarian Empire and saw this as their chance. They promised me safety if I helped them track you. Ethan's anger simmered, but he knew Daryl was a pawn in a much larger game. You're confined to quarters until we decide what to do with you. Zara, I want round-the-clock surveillance on all communications. As the crew absorbed the shock of betrayal, Ethan and Kalara redoubled their efforts to evade their relentless pursuers. They devised a daring plan to use the gravitational forces of a nearby binary star system to outmaneuver their attackers. It was a risky maneuver, but it was their best chance to escape. The Aurora plunged into the binary star system, 
using the intense gravitational pull to slingshot around the stars. The pursuing ships, not anticipating such a bold move, struggled to keep up. The battle that ensued was fierce, with Ethan and his crew showcasing their tactical brilliance and resilience. Against all odds, they managed to defeat the Coalition forces, but the victory came at a cost. The Aurora sustained heavy damage, and Lieutenant Zara was gravely injured. The aftermath left the crew questioning their mission and their chances of survival. The Aurora found itself cornered near a binary star system. With limited options, Ethan devised a daring plan to use the gravitational forces of the stars to outmaneuver their attackers. The ensuing battle was fierce, showcasing the ingenuity and bravery of the human crew. As the Aurora neared the binary star system, the pursuing enemy fleet closed in. Ethan studied the holographic map, his mind racing with potential strategies. We're going to use the gravitational forces of the stars to slingshot around them, he explained to his crew. It'll be risky, but it might give us the edge we need. Commander Raj Patel looked skeptical, but nodded. It's a bold move, Captain. Let's hope it works. The Aurora's engines roared to life as they initiated the maneuver. The ship trembled under the intense gravitational forces, and alarms blared as the structural integrity of the ship was tested to its limits. Ethan and his crew held their breath, navigating the narrow margin between the two massive stars. Their pursuers, not expecting such a bold tactic, struggled to adjust. The Aurora accelerated rapidly, using the gravitational slingshot to gain a significant speed boost. The pursuing ships, caught off guard, were momentarily thrown into disarray. Now, Ethan commanded, target their lead ship and fire. The Aurora's weapon systems unleashed a barrage of laser fire and missiles, striking the enemy fleet's flagship. Explosions erupted, and the enemy formation broke apart. Taking advantage of the chaos, the Aurora weaved through the enemy lines, delivering precise and devastating blows to the remaining ships. The battle raged on, but the tide had turned. The crew of the Aurora fought with renewed vigor, their spirits lifted by the success of Ethan's daring plan. The enemy ships, now on the defensive, tried to regroup, but it was too late. One by one they fell to the relentless assault of the Aurora's guns. Amidst the fierce combat, Lieutenant Zara Tran, despite her injuries, continued to coordinate the ship's defenses and offensive strategies. Her determination and resilience inspired the crew, and they rallied around her leadership. As the last enemy ship was destroyed, a cheer erupted throughout the Aurora. They had survived the Battle of the Binary Stars, but it came at a cost. The ship had sustained heavy damage, and many crew members were injured, including Zara, whose condition was now critical. Ethan made his way to the med bay, where Dr. Harlan was working tirelessly to save Zara's life. How is she? he asked, his voice filled with concern. Dr. Harlan shook his head. She's stable for now, but it's touch and go. She needs immediate medical attention that we can't provide here. Ethan's heart sank. The victory had come at a steep price, and the reality of their situation weighed heavily on him. But there was no time to dwell on it. They needed to find a safe haven to repair the ship and tend to the wounded. Desperate for repairs and resources, Kilara guided the Aurora to an uncharted planet hidden within a nebula, a secret Zalarian outpost. Here they found refuge and unexpected allies, a group of Zalarian rebels who opposed the Empire's current regime. There's a place, Kilara said, pointing to a barely visible location on the star map, a hidden planet within the Elysian Nebula. It was once a secret outpost for my people, now occupied by rebels who resist my father's rule. They might be able to help us. Ethan looked at the map, considering their options. We don't have much choice. Set a course for the Elysian Nebula. The journey was arduous, with the nebula's dense gases and electromagnetic storms making navigation difficult. But the Aurora pushed through, driven by the crew's determination and Kalara's guidance. As they approached the hidden planet, they were greeted by a fleet of Zalarian ships. A tense standoff ensued but Kalara's presence and a carefully crafted message from Ethan helped defuse the situation. The rebels, led by Commander Thalor, agreed to allow the Aurora to land and make repairs. The hidden planet, Valexis, was a lush and vibrant world, 
a stark contrast to the desolate space they had traversed. The Zalarian rebels welcomed them cautiously, their distrust of outsiders evident. But as they worked together to repair the Aurora and tend to the wounded, a mutual respect began to grow. Kalara and Ethan met with Thalor and the rebel leaders in a grand hall carved into the mountainside. Thank you for helping us, Ethan began. We're in a dire situation, and your assistance is greatly appreciated. Thalor, a tall and imposing Zalarian with a stern demeanor, nodded. We oppose the current regime, but we still honor the old alliances. Princess Kailara's presence here changes things. Perhaps this could be the beginning of a new understanding. As they discussed their next steps, Kailara revealed the full extent of the threat they faced. The coalition that attacked us is more powerful than we realized. They seek to destabilize the entire galaxy. And my father's regime is just one of their targets. We must unite to stop them. Thalor listened intently, his expression softening. We have resources and technology that can help you. But we also have our own battles to fight. If we join forces, it must be with the understanding that we are equals in this struggle. Ethan agreed recognizing the importance of forging strong alliances. Together, we can stand against this threat. We will share our knowledge and support each other. The days that followed were filled with intense collaboration. The Aurora was repaired and upgraded with Zalarian technology, enhancing its capabilities far beyond its original design. The crew trained alongside the Zalarian rebels, learning new tactics and forging bonds that transcended their differences. Kailara, meanwhile, found herself at a crossroads. The time spent with the rebels opened her eyes to the flaws and injustices within her father's regime. She began to see the rebellion not as a threat, but as a potential catalyst for positive change. Ethan and Kalara often spoke late into the night, discussing their hopes and fears for the future. We have a chance to make things better, Kalara said one evening, her gaze fixed on the stars but it will take more than just defeating our enemies. We need to build a new foundation, one based on trust and cooperation. Ethan nodded, his resolve strengthening. We'll do it together, for our people, and for the future of the galaxy. As the Aurora and the Zalarian rebels prepared to face their common enemy, a sense of unity and purpose filled the air. They were no longer just a ship and a group of rebels, they were a united force, ready to take on the challenges ahead. The hidden planet of Valexis became a symbol of hope and resilience, a place where different species and ideologies could come together to fight for a common cause. And as the Aurora lifted off, its crew felt a renewed sense of determination. The battle was far from over, but they were no longer alone. With allies at their side and a newfound strength, they set course for the next phase of their journey, ready to face whatever dangers lay ahead and to build a better future for all. While the Aurora underwent repairs, Ethan and Kailara embarked on a diplomatic mission to secure support from other alien civilizations. Their journey took them to the majestic city ships of the Vexari, the crystalline palaces of the Anaril, and the floating islands of the Thyraxi. Their first stop was the Vexari, an enigmatic species known for their city ships that drifted through the cosmos like floating metropolises. The Vexari were masters of diplomacy and trade, their wealth and influence unmatched. Ethan and Kailara were greeted by Ambassador Zelvor, a tall, graceful being with iridescent skin and a serene demeanor. Captain Hayes, Princess Kailara, welcome to Vexaria, Zelvor said, extending a hand. We have heard of your plight and the threat that looms over us all. What do you seek from us? Kailara spoke earnestly. Ambassador. The coalition that attacked us seeks to destabilize the galaxy. They are a threat not just to my empire, but to all civilizations. We need your support to stand against them. Zelvor listened intently, then responded, The Vexari are cautious by nature, but we recognize the gravity of your situation. We will consider your request and deliberate with our council. The negotiations were delicate, with Ethan and Kailara presenting their case with a mix of logic and urgency. The Vexari Council, a group of wise and influential leaders, debated the merits of involving their people in a potentially devastating conflict. After several tense days, they agreed to provide limited support, 
offering resources and intelligence, but refraining from direct military involvement. Their next destination was the Anaril, a species renowned for their crystalline palaces and advanced scientific knowledge. The Anaril valued knowledge and progress above all else, and their society thrived on innovation. Ethan and Kelara were received by high scholar Eloria, a brilliant mind with an analytical approach to diplomacy. We are aware of the coalition's activities, Eloria said, her crystalline eyes reflecting the light in mesmerizing patterns. But why should the Anaril risk our progress and stability for your cause? Ethan leaned forward, his voice steady and persuasive. High Scholar, the Coalition's goal is to disrupt and conquer. They will not stop with the Zalarian Empire. Your scientific advancements and resources make you a target. Standing with us now may prevent greater losses later. Eloria considered his words, her mind calculating the potential outcomes. Very well, Captain. The Anaril will assist you with our technological expertise and scientific resources, but we expect this alliance to be mutually beneficial. With the Anaril's support secured, the final stop was the Thoraxi, a species that lived on floating islands suspended in their planet's dense atmosphere. The Thoraxi were fierce warriors, their society built on honor and strength. They were ruled by Queen Varric, a formidable leader with a reputation for ruthlessness. Queen Varric, Kalara began, We come to you seeking an alliance against a common enemy. The Coalition threatens to bring war and chaos to the galaxy. Varric's eyes blazed with intensity. Why should the Thoraxi fight for you, Princess? What do we gain from this alliance? Kelara met her gaze, unflinching. The Coalition seeks to dominate all, including the Thoraxi. By joining us, you protect your people and honor the legacy of your ancestors who fought for freedom and justice. Varric considered this, her expression thoughtful. Very well. The Thoraxi will join your cause. But know this, Princess. We fight for our honor and the safety of our people. Betray us, and you will face our wrath. With the support of the Vexari, Anaril, and Thoraxi, Ethan and Kalara returned to the Aurora. Their diplomatic mission had been a success, but they knew the alliances were fragile and built on trust that could easily be broken. During their travels, Kalara discovered ancient records that hinted at a lost Zalarian technology, capable of turning the tide of any battle. This technology, known as the Starforge, was said to be hidden on a remote, inhospitable world. Kelara pored over the records, her brow furrowed in concentration. Ethan, look at this. The Starforge is real. It was created by my ancestors to harness the power of stars themselves. If we can find it, we can use it to defend against the Coalition. Ethan studied the ancient texts and holographic maps. Where is it located? Kalara pointed to a distant, uncharted region of space. Here, on the planet Exothar. But the records warn of powerful guardians and treacherous terrain. It won't be easy. Determined to find the Star Forge, Ethan and Kylara led an expedition to Exothar. The journey was perilous, with the Aurora navigating through dense asteroid fields and turbulent space storms. As they approached Exothar, the planet's harsh environment became evident blistering winds, volatile atmosphere, and rugged terrain. Landing on Exothar, the expedition team faced immediate challenges. The planet's surface was dotted with ancient ruins and advanced security systems designed to protect the Starforge. The team, consisting of Ethan, Kalara, and a select group of scientists and soldiers, moved cautiously through the ruins. They encountered the first of many guardians, massive, automated defense drones equipped with powerful energy weapons. The drones attacked with relentless precision, forcing the team to use both strategy and firepower to overcome them. Ethan's tactical acumen and the team's coordination proved crucial in these skirmishes. As they delved deeper into the ruins, they uncovered clues about the Star Forge's operation. Kalara deciphered ancient scripts, revealing that the device could create and control stars a power that could reshape the balance of power in the galaxy. However, activating it required a unique key, a crystalline artifact hidden within the heart of the ruins. The expedition pressed on, navigating deadly traps and solving complex puzzles left by the ancient Zalarians. They finally reached the inner sanctum 
where the crystalline key was guarded by a colossal sentinel, a guardian far more powerful than any they had encountered before. The battle with the sentinel was intense, pushing the team to their limits. Ethan coordinated their attacks, exploiting the sentinel's weaknesses, while Kelara used her knowledge of ancient technology to disrupt its systems. After a grueling fight, they managed to defeat the Guardian and retrieve the key. With the key in hand, they activated the Starforge. The ancient device hummed to life, its immense power evident as it began to manipulate the stars in the surrounding space. Kailara and Ethan stood in awe, realizing the full potential of what they had uncovered. We did it, Kailara said, her voice filled with a mix of triumph and reverence. The Starforge is ours. Ethan nodded, his mind already considering the implications. This changes everything. With the Starforge, we have a chance to stand against the Coalition and protect the galaxy. With the Starforge now a tantalizing possibility, the Coalition forces launched a full-scale assault on the Aurora and its allies. The final battle for control of the Starforge and the fate of the galaxy unfolded in a spectacular clash of fleets and ground forces. The Aurora and its newly formed alliance, consisting of ships from the Vexari, Anaril, and Thyraxi, converged near the Starforge. The Coalition's fleet, a formidable armada of advanced warships, was already waiting, blocking access to the ancient device. The tension was palpable as both sides prepared for the imminent conflict. Ethan stood on the bridge of the Aurora, his eyes scanning the tactical displays. All ships, prepare for combat. This is it. We either secure the Starforge or lose everything we fought for. The Allied fleet surged forward, weapons blazing. The Vexari city ships unleashed powerful energy beams, the Anaril's crystalline vessels fired precise laser arrays, and the Thyraxi warships charged headlong into battle, their warriors eager for the fight. The Aurora, equipped with Zalarian upgrades, joined the fray, its cannons and missile systems tearing into the enemy ranks. The space around the Starforge erupted in chaos, as ships clashed in a deadly dance of destruction. Explosions lit up the void, and debris scattered in all directions. The Coalition forces fought with brutal efficiency, their ships equipped with advanced shielding and cloaking technology that made them difficult targets. On the ground, Kailara led a strike team to secure the Starforge itself. They landed amidst heavy resistance. Coalition soldiers entrenched in defensive positions around the ancient structure. The battle on the surface was fierce with both sides exchanging relentless fire. Kelara's team moved with precision and determination, using their knowledge of the Starforge's layout to their advantage. They pushed forward, inch by inch, overcoming the Coalition's defenses. The sound of energy weapons and the cries of battle filled the air as they advanced toward the control center of the Starforge. In space, the Aurora was locked in a deadly duel with the Coalition's flagship a massive vessel bristling with weaponry. Ethan directed the crew with calm authority, coordinating attacks and defensive maneuvers. The ship shuddered under the impact of enemy fire, but the crew held firm, their resolve unbreakable. Focus all fire on their engines, Ethan commanded. We need to disable that ship. The Aurora's weapons converged on the flagship's engines, and a series of well-placed shots finally broke through its shields, causing a chain reaction of explosions. The flagship began to drift, its power systems failing. As the flagship was neutralized, a broadcast came through, displaying the imposing figure of the Coalition's leader, Supreme Commander Vortak. This is not over, Captain Hayes. You and your allies will fall, and the Starforge will be ours. Ethan met Vortak's gaze with steely determination. Not today, Vortak. This ends now. A massive Zalarian dreadnought, the Imperial Star, emerged from hyperspace dwarfing all other ships. Its presence cast a long shadow over the battlefield. The Emperor's voice boomed across all communication channels. This is Emperor Zaylor of the Zalarian Empire. Surrender Princess Kailara immediately, or face the full wrath of the Empire. Kailara, still in the midst of the ground battle, received the message with a mix of shock and defiance. Father, she whispered, recognizing the voice. She activated her communicator to respond. Father, I will not surrender. The Coalition is a threat to us all. We must unite, not fight among ourselves. The Emperor's reply was cold and unwavering. 
You have been deceived by these primitives and traitors. Return to me now, or I will obliterate them, and you along with them. Ethan, hearing the ultimatum, knew the situation was dire. He opened a channel to the Emperor. Emperor Zaylor, this is Captain Ethan Hayes of the Aurora. We are not your enemies. The Coalition is the true threat. We have the Star Forge, and together we can stop them. The Emperor's image appeared on the Aurora's main screen, his expression filled with disdain. Captain Hayes, your defiance is commendable but futile. The might of the Zalarian Empire cannot be challenged by mere humans. Ethan stood firm. We're not asking you to surrender. We're asking you to join us. The Starforge can be used to protect us all. But if we fight each other, the Coalition will win. The Emperor hesitated, his eyes narrowing as he weighed Ethan's words. Prove to me that the Coalition is the greater threat. Show me that you have control of the Starforge and that it can be used for our defense. Kalara, sensing an opportunity, transmitted the data they had gathered about the Coalition's plans and the Starforge's capabilities. Father, look at this. They intend to use the Starforge to destabilize the entire galaxy. We cannot let that happen. The Emperor reviewed the data, his expression gradually shifting from anger to contemplation. Finally, he spoke. Very well. I will give you one chance, Captain Hayes. Use the Starforge to demonstrate its power and repel the Coalition forces. If you succeed, we will consider an alliance. Ethan nodded, turning to his crew. You heard him. Let's make this count. The Star Forge, now fully operational, was a marvel of ancient engineering. Kalara and a team of scientists worked tirelessly to interface with its systems, while Ethan coordinated the fleet's defense. The Coalition, sensing a shift in the balance of power, launched a desperate assault to seize control of the Star Forge. As the battle intensified, the Star Forge began to glow with an otherworldly light. Kalara and the scientists activated its core, channeling its immense energy into a focused beam. The beam sliced through space, targeting the Coalition's largest battleship. The ship disintegrated in a blinding flash, its fragments scattering across the battlefield. The Coalition fleet, witnessing the devastating power of the Star Forge, faltered. Ships began to retreat, their formation breaking apart. The Allied fleet, seizing the moment, pressed the attack, driving the Coalition forces into disarray. The Emperor watched from the Imperial Star, his expression a mix of awe and calculation. Impressive, Captain Hayes. You have proven your worth. The Zalarian Empire will stand with you against the Coalition. Ethan breathed a sigh of relief. Thank you, Emperor Zaylor. Together we will ensure peace and stability in the galaxy. Just as victory seemed within reach, a shocking betrayal from within their own ranks threatened to unravel everything. A trusted ally revealed their true allegiance, turning the tide in favor of the Emperor. The celebrations aboard the Aurora and among their allies were short-lived. As Ethan and Kalara strategized for their next move against the Coalition, the seeds of betrayal began to sprout. Ensign Daryl Moss, who had previously been revealed as a mole, was not the only traitor. Unbeknownst to them, Commander Raj Patel, a highly respected officer, had been secretly working for the Emperor all along. Raj had been feeding the Emperor critical information, allowing him to manipulate events from behind the scenes. His betrayal was motivated by a deep-seated loyalty to the Zalarian Empire, and a belief that humans were not ready to wield such immense power as the Starforge. The revelation came during a crucial strategy meeting. The Allied leaders, including Ethan, Kylara, Ambassador Zelvor, High Scholar Eloria, and Queen Varric, were gathered in the Aurora's command center. They were discussing their next steps when suddenly, Raj activated a hidden communication device. Emperor Zaylor, the time is now. Raj announced, his voice cold and unwavering. Before anyone could react, the Aurora's systems were hijacked and the ship's defenses turned against its crew. The Imperial Star and the Emperor's fleet, which had been lying in wait, moved in to seize control of the Star Forge and neutralize the Coalition's forces. Ethan stared at Raj in disbelief. Why, Raj? After everything we've been through? Raj met his gaze with a steely resolve. 
Humanity is not ready for the power of the Starforge. The Emperor will use it to bring order to the galaxy, something we could never achieve alone. Chaos erupted as loyal crew members and allies scrambled to counteract the sabotage. Kalara and her team worked frantically to regain control of the Starforge, while Ethan led a group to confront Raj and his followers. The confrontation in the command center was intense. Ethan and his loyalists faced off against Raj and the traitors. Blaster fire echoed through the corridors, and hand-to-hand -hand combat ensued as both sides fought for control. Raj, you don't have to do this, Ethan shouted over the din. We can still work together to protect the galaxy. But Raj was unmoved. This is the only way, Ethan. The Emperor's vision is the galaxy's best chance for stability. With a final desperate push, Ethan managed to disarm Raj and subdue him, but not before Raj activated a distress signal to the Emperor's fleet, pinpointing their exact location. The Emperor's forces moved in swiftly, launching a devastating attack on the Allied ships and ground forces. The situation grew dire as the Allies struggled to hold their ground. The betrayal had cost them dearly, and the Emperor's fleet was closing in to claim victory. With the Emperor's forces closing in, Ethan and Kalara led a last-ditch defense of the Starforge. Every remaining ship, soldier, and resource was thrown into the fight. The battle pushed them to their limits, testing their resolve and their willingness to sacrifice for a greater cause. The Starforge's immense power was once again harnessed, but this time it was used not just as a weapon, but as a beacon of hope. Kalara and her team managed to wrest control back from the Emperor's override, channeling its energy to bolster the defenses of the Allied fleet. Ethan coordinated the defense from the Bridge of the Aurora, his voice calm and commanding despite the chaos. All ships, form a defensive perimeter around the Starforge. We hold the line here. The Allied fleet, battered but not broken, rallied around the Starforge. The Vexari city ships, Anaril crystalline vessels, and Thoraxi warships formed an impenetrable barrier. The Emperor's fleet, though powerful, was met with fierce resistance. On the ground, Kalara and her strike team faced waves of Imperial troops. The battle was brutal, with heavy casualties on both sides. Kalara fought with a ferocity born of desperation and determination, her leadership inspiring those around her. Stand firm, she shouted. We fight for our freedom, for our future. Amidst the chaos, a crucial development unfolded. High scholar Iloria, using her scientific prowess, discovered a way to amplify the Starforge's energy to create a massive shield that could protect the entire Allied fleet. But activating it required a direct interface with the Starforge's core, a task fraught with danger. Kalara volunteered for the mission. I am the only one who can do this. The Starforge is part of my heritage. It must be me. Ethan, knowing the risks but understanding the necessity, nodded. We'll cover you. Make it happen. As Kalara and a small team made their way to the Starforge's core, Ethan led the defense with renewed vigor. The Allied ships fought valiantly, their resolve unshaken despite the overwhelming odds. The Aurora took the brunt of the assault, its shields flickering but holding. Kalara reached the core, her heart pounding. She connected the crystalline key and began the activation sequence. The Starforge hummed to life, its energy building to a crescendo. Outside, the Allied fleet fought on, buying her the time she needed. Finally, the Starforge unleashed a brilliant burst of energy creating a massive shield that enveloped the entire Allied fleet. The Emperor's ships slammed into the shield, their attacks neutralized. The tide had turned. The Emperor, seeing his fleet falter, made a desperate gambit. He ordered a full-scale assault on the Star Forge, hoping to break through the shield by sheer force. But the Allied fleet, invigorated by the success of Kalara's mission, held the line. With the Emperor's forces in disarray, Ethan saw an opportunity. All ships, concentrate fire on the Imperial Star. Let's end this. The combined firepower of the Allied fleet converged on the Imperial Star. The Emperor's flagship, despite its formidable defenses, began to buckle under the relentless assault. Explosions rippled across its surface, and the ship started to break apart. In a final act of defiance, the Emperor attempted to launch a last-ditch attack on the Aurora, but his ship was too damaged. The Imperial Star exploded in a blinding flash, 
signaling the end of the battle. The Allied fleet cheered as the remnants of the Emperor's forces retreated. The battle was won, but the cost was high. The battlefield was littered with debris and the fallen, a stark reminder of the price of victory. As the dust settled, Ethan and Kalara stood together, their bond forged in the fires of battle. They had faced betrayal and overwhelming odds, but their determination and unity had seen them through. The Starforge, now fully under their control, became a symbol of hope and a beacon for a new era of cooperation and peace. With the Emperor defeated and the Coalition scattered, the galaxy had a chance to rebuild and thrive. Ethan looked at Kalara, a sense of pride and gratitude in his eyes. We did it, together. Kalara smiled, her eyes reflecting the hope of a new dawn. Yes, together. And this is just the beginning. The future lay ahead, filled with challenges and opportunities. But with the strength of their alliance and the power of the Starforge, they were ready to face whatever came next, united in their quest for a better galaxy.